I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So we're back. And sharks have two penises. They do. They're they called do. claspers. We they just are. learned this. We did. And it's... Uh, awesome. I, I, have to, I have to point out that uh, one article that we found... Uh, pointed out the Discovery Channel really wants us to know that shark sex extremely aggressive. I want to be reincarnated as a shark. There's. I saw street sharks. I'm I'm sure that it's, it's got to be pretty similar to that. So street sharks, they weren't reincarnated as sharks. They were like genetic mutants. They were basically the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, except instead of being originally turtles, they were humans. If my memory is correct. Yeah, and then they got turned into sharks who wear jeans. They were, it was a perfect show. Well, because they were humans, still. Did oh, oh, like no. they were humans who just happened to be so did street they sharks. Then get the two penises. That's a good question. Because the, they were wearing the pants, we will never actually know. One on e in each leg. Left penis, it turns right out penis. they don't actually have feet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, wait, what was the, the plot for this was absolutely bonkers. Let's see. A university professor named Robert Bolton and his partner, Dr. Luther Paradigm, created a machine known as the Gene Slammer. Ah, yes, that's correct. Uh... Which is capable of changing aquatic animals into anthropomorphic humans by combining their DNA. In his attempt to prevent Paradigm from using this machine for personal power, Bolton is transformed into an unseen monstrosity, but escapes. Later, Paradigm gives Bolton's four sons, John, Bobby, Coop, and Clint, the likeness of four different sharks. When Paradigm captures their friends, the ben, their friend Benz, the resulting street sharks rescue him, and resu the resulting battle causes Paradigm to be combined with a piranha DNA, for which he is often nicknamed Dr. Piranoid by other characters. In subsequent episodes, Dr. Paradigm creates a variety of mutant animals to destroy the street sharks while attempting to persuade the inhabitants of their native metropolis of Fission City to imprison them. Of these mutant animals, a few side up with the sharks themselves, namely Rock, Moby, Moby Lick, Manta Man, and El Sordo. <laughs> El Sordo. The final few episodes introduced the Dino Vengers. Oh, <laughs> a group of extraterrestrial dinosaurs allied with the street shark against their own rivals, the Raptor Gang. The uh What? Uh, it was I I legitimately loved it's free on Amazon Prime. I'm gonna watch that after this. The Street Sharks? <laughs> yeah, I really loved that show a lot. I had a uh, a Streaks action figure. So good. Streaks? Yeah, he's the blue blue one with the purple uh, stripes on the back and the green pants. Gotcha. Big Slamu. <laughs> That's... <laughs> I couldn't tell if he came just now or what. <laughs> oh, that's the red one. <laughs> what, who is Streaks? Streaks. S -T -R -E -E -X. Is it like... E-E-X. Oh, EEX, got it, got yeah. it. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot that this was the nineties. <laughs> um Ah yeah, streaks, okay. Oh, he had rollerblades. Hell yeah, I had rollerblades too. Fuck yeah. Oh god. He was the cool brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> the cool brother. Oh god. Um <laughs> Yeah, those toys were wild. I'm pretty sure they were like mostly like vinyl, if my memory is correct. I think there is actually a problem with with street sharks in terms of like some of them have rotted away. Basically, it's possible. Um, '90s toys were fucking wild. I might have mentioned it before, but I had a um. There was a toy that I got, and it was a forge where you would get um vial mm -hmm. like these tubes full of um pewter pellets, and you would literally like melt pewter and cast it into forms so that's been around since like the 50s though yeah it seems like it lasted a little too long like it was rad yeah. i loved it it was awesome but like that shit <laughs> it seems it was uh, ill-advised it, 
it was kind of like the male version of this. This street shark toy looks almost like he has two penises. The um, boy version of a uh, 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 um, easy bake oven. Yeah, kind of. But that was yeah. that was really creepy crawlers. Oh, like, hell let's be yeah. real. Which yeah. once again, another another toy that's superheated metal. Um. And you poured plastic into a mold. So, like, not only are you dealing with a very hot surface, yeah, but you're also dealing with plastic fumes. And they're probably not the, like, cleanest plastics, right? No, probably like, not. It's probably worse than 3D printing. Almost like, definitely. Because 3D printing with PLA is literally just, like, PLA sugar. is corn. Yeah, it's corn. Yeah. And then ABS, you know, doesn't smell great, but... I keep that's why I keep my printer in the basement. <laughs> well, ABS can be dangerous. ABS yeah. can be dangerous. Um, but like, you know, I mean, I usually just use PLA cuz most of the applications that I use it for don't need to be uh ABS, but that's yeah. just my personal. I need to get a spool of um the flexible uh filament cuz uh Erica wants um custom ear gauges. Mm. So I want to get the because her her ears while well, they were gauged now she just says ears that can't hold earrings <laughs> she wants uh, uh custom gauges so I I might I have... work on those soon nice I have to I have to fix my printer still the hot end I had to disassemble the hot end and like figure out what the fuck is going on oh, this God. has been printer talk printer talk remember so... kids clean your extruder. That's true. That's part of the reason why. Because so basically, what's happening is it's not heating. It's not heating it evenly. So I'm pretty yeah. sure my extruder's fucked up somehow. Um, gotcha. Because what I was doing was I was printing some black filament while I was doing like a test to make a part to replace a part uh -huh. um, on one of my model kits because uh, a cat in the past had chewed a chewed it and I needed to replace it. So I, I 3D modeled it. I 3D modeled the part, and I had yeah. it mostly ready. And when I went to switch over to the correct color for the part, uh, it just stopped working. So oh, that's good. where I'm at. Yeah. Good. Um. But uh. But yeah. What? What? what, what... My brain just <laughs> shut down. Okay. Cool. Um. So I watched it happen. <laughs> yeah. It 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 happens sometimes. You know, that's one of the reasons why when I do, like, important presentations, I usually, yeah. like, <clears throat> I read through them so many times. Um, I did, s I practiced my dissertation proposal this week six uh -huh. times. Oh, it's a 45-minute presentation. Oh, God. Um, anywho, this is, po this, is, this is a podcast, which I think you probably already guessed if you're listening to it. This is a weird song. Oh. It's a weird song. I'm playing with my settings. <laughs> okay. So this is this is this is a very very strange song. This is like an hour long song that you're listening to. I hope you're ready. Buckle in. This is gonna get oh, weird. Oh yeah. Um. But so basically, what we are is we're a podcast where we talk about uh, cryptids, paranormal, weird stuff in general. Uh, because because quite frankly, this week uh is not paranormal in any shape or form, in my opinion. Uh. But that's a whole nother thing. Uh, anywho, I, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And uh, Brandon, this week, I'm going to finally tackle a long requested cryptid. And by long requested, I mean like a couple months. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm excited for this it. Is, this is not the Wendigo, uh, which uh, I'm coming around on the Wendigo. I might do the Wendigo at some point, but I need to like really make sure like i really need to take a lot of time on that one yeah. um <laughs> for obvious reasons um but this week we're going to be talking about the megalodon Woo! so for those of you who don't know the megalodon is an extinct creature from the early devonian whoa, to the whoa, early whoa, jurassic whoa, period whoa, whoa. You're, you're you're throwing around that e word pretty freely yeah, well, you, you, you're not letting me get through this. I have to talk about it, and we'll get to that. Oh, okay. So between uh, roughly 412 and 182 million years ago, uh, characteristically, the beast is bilaterally symmetrical with musculature that comprises most, most of its so soft tissue. Uh, 
The mere mention of its name can strike fear into the hearts of those who know it. The thought of its opening and closing shell menacingly inspires feelings of dread. The bi- a bivalve mollusk-, mollusk to be wary of for sure. Wait. <laughs> what? Yeah, so so there is a megalodon, but it's a it's a it's a clam, basically. <laughs> it's all yeah, terrifying. Because it looks like a tooth. And megalodon means big tooth. Uh, so, that um, makes sense. One of the people who suggested this episode made this joke. So this is a this is a, a shamelessly sto- stolen joke uh, about like taxono- taxonomy and like things along those lines. Uh, I think their name was uh, Taxidia Taxus is what they have on uh, on um, Discord. Discord. Also, we missed somebody's name last week. On oh the- yes. The thing we uh, it was Will Smith, if my memory is correct. Yes, we I should Will probably. Smith. We yeah, we. Will... Oh wait, oh, uh, scroll. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom. Hang on. Oh, scroll, scroll. Twenty two pages. Jesus. Well, most of this uh... is pictures. This one's a very picture heavy episode because. All right, we got Will Smith. All right, all right. I was just double wiki, checking wiki. the list. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Wiki, wild, wild. The wild, wild west. The James wildest west. of west. He should definitely get back into uh, the rap game. Yeah, I mean, Will Smith took a like the action, like the 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 movie Will Smith who gets your wife's name out my fu- out your fucking mouth. Will Smith, um, yeah. he's 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 taken a weird turn in life. I'll say, yeah, the, um, to say the least. Yeah. So like that, that maybe but maybe maybe like, you know, we could also just have like, you know, Childish Gambino keep doing his thing. See, he I would love him to keep doing his stuff. Also, um uh, uh Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia just came out with an album called Scaring Them Hoes and it's pretty good. Scaring Them Hoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty good. Amazing. Um God damn it. So. <laughs> oh, and the fucking Isley brothers just came out with this. You know, the, the who's that lady? That them? Yeah. They just came out with another song with two chains. What? And it's actually good. I know. It's the most confusing sounding combo, but it actually works. Interesting. Anywho. um, So Megalodon's mixed up, right? Uh. Taxia Tr- Taxus was the one who made me aware of the tooth-shaped clam. Uh, but the one that I actually want to talk about this week uh, lived from about 23 to 3.6 million years ago. It's from the I- early My- Miocene, Miocene to the early Pliocene eras, right? So it's, those, those are some geological ages that uh, most of you will know nothing about. Because <laughs> I don't. Um, so I the creature don't remember much of anything from that period of school. <laughs> well, also they changed the geological periods at some point too. Wait, when did they do that? Uh, they made them. They like restructured them so they're more accurate. Basically, I think. I don't know when they did it, but it. I want to point out that a lot of the things, a lot of the educational material we had came from like the eighties and nineties on stuff like that. So. Yeah. So even if they changed in the ninety, like the late nineties, that's still beyond the range of when we learned about these things. Yeah. Um, so the uh, the megalodon is was a mag- mackerel shark, and debatably, and I say debatably because this is extremely debatable. Um, uh, the ballpark of fifteen and eighteen meters in length, which is roughly forty nine to fifty eight feet for our imperial okay. listeners. And it weighed somewhere in the ballpark of 50 metric tons, depending on the length. Now, these claims are frequently in dispute because uh, being mostly cartilage, uh, these sizes are estimates from surviving vertebrae and teeth, because that's all we have of the megalodon. Teeth and vertebrae. We don't have the jawbone. We don't have any of the bones. We don't have anything other than... Their teeth they were big soft and their boys. vertebrae. They are big soft boys, big soft hard boys, because they are muscle. With two dicks. 50 ton. How big is a dick on a 50 ton? And there's two of them? It doesn't, it probably does it doesn't need to be that big, so it's probably not that big. 
I mean... Because it's literally just a tube for, for squirting. Probably not big compared to them, but oh. Yeah. Imagine if you had a mastodon, a megalodon uh, dong. Oh boy. A megalodon dong. A megalodon. That's going to be... I'm going to make a parody metal band and it's going to be megalodon. It'll be great. <laughs> and I'm assuming you're going to be parodying mastodon songs? All of them. Okay, All of them. It, I'm it. I'm working through trying to 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 weird out blood and thunder in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, that being said, the megalodon was most likely longer, larger than a yellow school bus, which is about 13 meters and way lighter than the megalodon is. Um, because you know, cube sc- square is a fucking bitch. Cube square is a bitch. And fun fact, they're both filled with children. presumably um so to move that bus sized body through prehistoric seas the megalodon had to be modeled uh what has been modeled to require on average ninety eight thousand one hundred and seventy five calories kilocalories per day that's calories with a capital c two cinnabon (laughs) uh (laughs) For a 60 metric uh, ton shark, in terms of fast food, and I actually did do the math. Oh, shit, you did do that math. Yeah, that's about 174-ish Big Macs a day, which is about $900 US dollars, <laughs> um, or 200 BV5 layer burritos, which is roughly 680 US dollars. Now, that sounds like a lot. But I do want to highlight something that I remember from years ago, and I found evidence to support this. Michael Phelps would eat around 10,000 to 12,000 calories in his prime. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so for reference, he would eat the following in a day, uh, according to Spoon University. And this is, I, I, I copy this entirely because it's it's just such a ridiculous list. Okay. So for breakfast... He had three fried egg sandwiches with tomatoes, fried onions, mayo, lettuce, and cheese. Lots of cheese in parentheses. <laughs> One five, five egg omelet, <laughs> which really at the end of the day is just five, five eggs, really. Like, um, yeah. a bowl of grits, three slices of French toast dusted with powdered sugar, three chocolate chip pancakes, and two cups of coffee. I feel bad for whoever was making this because that's like a big breakfast. There's, I like watching um, strongman stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, and they, they, there's a show on history where they did like they get strongmen to do like ancient stronghand strongman competition stuff. But mm-hmm. some of these guys that like they got a YouTube channel. And there's one where like Brian Shaw, uh, Eddie Hall, um, like these guys go to like a diner, and they and the diner has like a food challenge. And because they're like they, that's what they have to eat just to maintain their like weight is like twelve thousand calories a day, so they're no, they're just hanging out with friends. Was they each ordered like the challenge burger and then also like two other main dishes plus like ice cream and all that just for their normal fucking meal? It was ridiculous. Like they the were trying the- to win a food challenge. They were just like this food challenge doesn't satisfy my daily calorie requirement so so the food challenge do they yeah. like pay for it because like i feel like i feel like if you know that the food challenge isn't actually a challenge for you there's like an ethical concern there there's i you know i don't know i'm sure they 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 paid for everything and tipped well because <laughs> like i feel like i feel like if you're doing that if you're inflicting that like yeah i don't know um Anywho, but Michael Phelps' diet continues. Uh, during lunch, he would have a pound of enriched pasta. <laughs> Perfect. Two large ham and cheese sandwiches with mayo made on white bread and a thousand calories worth of energy drinks. So like two energy drinks. Oh, God. Um, and then for dinner, he would have another pound of pasta, an eight inch pizza and even more energy drinks. Why for dinner have energy? You're not going to sleep. I mean, the amount of calories that this dude probably was using was quite a lot, but I don't know. He had to take wild shits. Oh, uh, the wildest, 100%. Like, like, what's a two-pound pasta shit? Like, what's that like? I I don't know, (laughs) but I feel like like whatever they were, they were not, they were either super solid or not solid at all. 
God. It's somewhere. In, it's it's one or the other. It's not in between. Or it's somehow both at the same time. I, it's got to be both at the same time. I mean, for yeah. his body to be able to process that, it's probably like very not solid, but only out of a biological need to provide lubrication to shoot out the <laughs> solid parts. So his body is creating its own loop. <laughs> <laughs> it's an evolutionary like masterpiece yeah. yeah um anywho bereft of energy drinks cheese and pasta the megalodon had a slightly different diet than phelps um it was lightly targeted it likely targeted uh prehistoric variations of whales seals and sea turtles that were roughly 2.5 to 7 meters long pretty big um yeah to eat that prey, the Megalodon employed some serious chompers. The shark derives its name from its characteristic teeth, Megalodon meaning big tooth, which can measure over seven inches in diagonal length. It could theoretically swallow two people whole with its 2.7 by 3.4 meter wide jaws. Realistically, though, it would probably shred them to pieces with a bite force between 108,000 oh. to 182,000 newtons, which uh, is over now I can't what... Look at- megalodon vor anymore <laughs> you wouldn't survive that no no you wouldn't you might survive whale shark vor though they probably I bet the bristles you. they got I bristles bet, I bet you whale shark vor is a thing it's got it hang on it, hey, I, I, whale shark it has vor. to be a thing this is the kind of research that you really need that this uh, is this is why people keep coming back to the podcast is for this research in particular. Well, on f- furaffinity.net has Shark Week post number three, which is whale shark and orca vor. So, which what's that. getting bored? Is it the? I assume that whale shark is getting bored by the orca, right? I imagine. I'm. Hang on, let me make sure I'm not on a company VPN before I click this link. Probably a fair play. P- probably a fair play. Um. Let's see. Yep, you're correct. The orca is being consumed by the whale shark oh i got it wrong i was backwards i thought the orca was consuming the whale shark but uh okay cool yep. um so uh that bite force brandon by the way is over 100 times the bite force of the strongest human jaw that i like the strongest estimate i could find for a human jaw so uh I yeah mean, then they've clearly never the bite force of my daughter holy shit <laughs> that her bite force is actually two uh, megalodons it, it hurts i'll tell you that <laughs> i'll tell you that she she's out of the biting phase they had to she, she, she had she had a special reading times daily at school called um uh, uh teeth are not for biting <laughs> but they are that's explicitly what they're for <laughs> yeah yeah she was just too good at it she was so good she had to share with the other kids <laughs> oh man uh, she's accelerated in her biting uh, she's in the top percentile percentile yeah. of biting um, it's actually a problem though just to it, let it, you know it's, like, it's, it's she a eats clams but with the shell on yeah it's very strange um, yeah. yeah you know you know that uh, avocados were were intended for like large you know like uh uh like giant sloths, mammoths, yeah. things like that to eat. Um, you're not supposed to bite straight through the, yeah. the seed. <laughs> she likes the seed. <laughs> um, so the range of the megalodon was extremely wide, and it is said to have a co- it is said to have had a cosmopolitan distribution, uh, spanning most of the world's oceans during its prime. It basically a modern day analog of this would be an orca. Now, okay. You would expect this this uh, terror of the deep to be the absolute apex of the food chain with, like, no equals. But it was not alone. It had competition in the form of a species of macroraptorial sperm whale named Leviathan melvilli. Ah, melvilli. Okay. Now, the taxonomy, which was kind of amazing because the genus is derived from the biblical Leviathan, uh, which we definitely talked about before in passing, Um and the species from my personal literary ne- nemesis, uh, Herman Melville. Um, ah, I knew that name sounded familiar. Yes. So that's that's the author of Moby Dick. And um, I have in parentheses here, John will probably l- rant about cetology here, and I will. 
I will take this moment. <laughs> Good. So, I don't know if you've read the unabridged Moby Dick, but my I recommendation is don't read the unabridged Moby Dick because it's a novel that I think spends like four of its chapters talking about whale cetology from the perspective of the 1800s. Oh, good. It, it, it's basically, basically Moby Dick is one of those books where the author got super into researching the thing his book is about, but instead uh. of like not putting that in the story, he's like, nah, I'm sharing all of this research with everyone because fuck you. I want to talk about whales. That's, fair and i want to point out that when i read moby dick it was uh during the summer of 10th grade right so going into 10th grade um yeah. or ninth grade it was one of the two i can't remember which um yeah and i had to read a literary classic as one of my like as a book reading like a, 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 a over the summer reading book yeah as and there wasn't any like choices for like books that you could choose. So me, I'm just like, I don't know, fucking Moby Dick. That was in the Page Master. Um oh, of course, man. as we all know, the Page Master being the uh 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 one of the greatest animated films of the nineties. I think it was the nineties. Yeah, yeah. I tried God. I tried a tale of two cities and I just couldn't make I hate old books. 1994. It was Macaulay Culkin, Christopher Lloyd, Whoopi Goldberg, Patrick Stewart, and there was one other big name involved in it. Uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd was the... the Oh, Frank Welker. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, oh, it was made by Hanna-Barbera? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, but Christopher Lloyd was a librarian. Um, Macaulay Culkin Still, was... He's looked the same since Taxi, by the way. He's some kind of vampire. Uh, absolutely. 100%. Um, he and Tom Cruise. Okay, yeah. Frank Walker. Oh, Leonard Nimoy was in it as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, so, so the... That... My, my thinking is like, oh, it's in Page Master. That must mean it's, you know... Oh, it's a good fun, book to good choose. Book. It's a good book to choose, right? Nope. Because um, I watched Page Master a lot. I had it on VHS. The scene in which the painting turns into like a CGI blob is one of my favorite yeah. weird CGI scenes from the 90s. Um, <laughs> but when I read that book, I died inside. A part of me died that summer and is never resurrected that... because God. of cetology. Because don't read, th just listen to Blood and Thunder by Mastodon, strangely on topic, because it is just a song about that book. Is it really? It's literally, yeah, it's literally just that book. Yeah, Blood and Thunder is basically, uh, it basically describes uh, my entire emotional state <laughs> while reading that book. Because also, this is back when I uh, I refused categorically to skim things. Yeah. Because um, I'm a weirdo. That's really all there is to it. I am just a weirdo. Um, so I didn't skim things. And uh, because of that, I read every word of Cetology. I remember literally oh. nothing. But I read it. And I hated every second of it. God, I had a phase where I would read every other line. Interesting. Because <laughs> I was like, that I would get enough. My, my the thought process at the time was like, I, there would be enough information on every other line to like infer what happened <laughs> in, the, in between parts. That, that's <laughs> just it's not how it works, by the way. Yeah, not that's how it works. that's such an in, like. It almost makes sense in reference material, but like in a novel, that just like doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> no. You know what? Uh, now that we're since we're on the topic of novels, you know what other book really fucked with me? Uh, what's that? Crime and Punishment. Never read it. Yeah, uh, Crime and Punishment sent sent me into an existential spiral for the entirety oh, of the God. time I was reading it. Um, in high school, so yeah, I've been I've been I've been like basically existing in a state of existentialism since like ninth grade. So like it, you know, fair. It, it's just that's just the way of things. Um. Yeah. 
But yeah, that that book is depressing as shit. <laughs> there, just stick to high fantasy. There's a reason why I like exclusively read high fantasy, and then also anything that for research for this episode <laughs> for this podcast. I'd say read uh, meddling kids. That one's pretty good. That's not high fantasy. It's a it's a retelling of Scooby Doo that is actually like it's an adult it like retelling Scooby Doo. Yes, yeah, it's fun, but. But um, instead of like what Velma did, yeah, it it's actually like well written. Huh. Um, that sounds fun. Fred's dead. Uh, so is Scooby actually from the matter. beginning, or did they die? Yeah, th- yeah from okay. the beginning. From the beginning, Fred's dead, and Scooby's dead because uh, it's it was a murder suicide. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's set it's set years in the future, and you know Scooby's a Great Dane, so you know. Yeah. They have a shorter lifespan. But they're, don't worry. Don't worry. One of Scooby's kids is there. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he had hip arthritis, so Fred took him out back and uh It made Scooby. a mistake. <laughs> um, now, in, in terms of scale, uh, though, if, Brown, we're getting back to... So, just... <laughs> Sweet segue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, just for a reminder, we were talking about Leviathan Melvilli. Yes. Um, so that's the uh, macroreptorial sperm whale um, that was derived with the name from Leviathan and Melville. Um, in terms of scale, its size is comparable to Megalodon. Uh, its teeth are even larger, actually, than Megalodon's. Clocking its teeth in at, look like sweet potatoes. They really do. I swear, I was working on this episode, and Christina saw that, and she's like, why do you have pictures of sweet potatoes? Because <laughs> they look like sweet potatoes. They look like sweet potatoes. They literally look like sweet potatoes. Um, I just got to that episode of Naruto where the one guy just eats sweet potatoes when he does bad things. It's weird. I don't remember that, but okay. Um, yeah. Might have been a, that might have been an anime-exclusive character. That's uh, maybe it's so you know how there's that um, other guy that they put the uh, nine tailed fox chakra into. Okay, so that's that's definite. Oh wait, are you talking about Shippen? Shippen. Oh, you're talking about um uh ba 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 the eight tailed beast dude. Uh, no, uh, the, the nine tails. So so when what? Naruto when they yeah so when the first Okage put the nine tails fox into Naruto the Fire Nation um. No, sorry, the, the the fire uh village. There was some extra chakra that like escaped. They collected it and put it inside of a different boy named Sora. Okay. So Sora's dad is the one that put that into him, and whenever Sora's dad like unleashes his like team of ninjas onto a like kill a village, he just eats a sweet potato as he watches. Okay, I I don't remember that at all. That must have been I need to look this up. <laughs> Cuz I've I've read every manga chapter and I don't remember that. I didn't watch yeah, the entirety of the series cuz uh Sora monk in training from the Land of Fire's Fire Temple. Yep. He's a so pseudo jinkuri. He was he in the I don't remember this in the Kazuma, manga. that's his dad's name, Kazuma. So Kazuma. Kazuma just eats sweet potatoes when he like fights people. Okay, yeah, he's an he's an anime exclusive character. That oh, okay. that would explain why I don't know who he is. Okay, <sighs> I thought for a second I'd have to I'd have to take away some of my weed my weeb uh, weed, <laughs> my weeb cred. <laughs> um. Anywho, the teeth, Brandon, these sweet potato teeth, one point yeah. two feet. So they're pretty big sweet oh, potatoes. Damn. Yeah, yeah, those are fucking huge sweet potatoes. Um. Interestingly, though, uh, both Leviathan and Megalodon's extinction coincides with the increase in baleen whale size and a reduction in their diversity um, oh. to make matters worse. And this is important. I want you to remember this because this is going to okay. come up. This is a very important fact. Uh, the Megalodon, oceanic cooling and lowered sea levels likely reduce the available nurseries as well. Um, which okay. is very, very, very fucking important for some stuff we're going to be talking about in a bit. Um, thankfully for us, though, the Megalodon is extinct as shit uh, because it would certainly fuck you up, right? 
Um, yeah. The nightmare shark makes Jaws look like a guppy. Uh, but some question whether or not the creature truly went extinct. It did, but. Well, I mean, John, but coelacanth. Get the fuck out of here. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up with that fucking shit. Coelacanth is like a tiny la- a tiny ash fish. This is a goddamn school bus. <laughs> it's filled with Miss Frizzles. <laughs> Every megalodon is piloted by a uh, a, a Miss Frizzle. <laughs> Yeah, there could be a school bus filled with children up your butt right now, and you'd have no idea. That's true. That's the no idea. Th- that's the true existential horror of Magic School Bus is there could just be children <laughs> anywhere. There's. I want to make a new episode where the bus becomes full size again while it's still inside of someone. <laughs> that definitely, absolutely, has been made as a joke somewhere. <laughs> has to be. I mean, it's basically inner space. They're just all horribly scarred. <laughs> or that one episode of uh, of uh, Rick and Morty when they blow up. Although he he got supersized. Regardless, whatever. Um, so uh, Megalodon's history is a surprisingly is surprisingly intertwined with mythology, right? Um, huh. So according to history's most infamous doctor, Pliny the Elder. Woo! Yeah, we know. If you've listened to Swabones, he is a very, very much a recurring character on that podcast. Um, so Pliny the Elder was from the first century AD. AD. Um, in his, he believed that sharks' teeth were petrified tongues, glossopetre of snakes dra- oh, and dragons that would fall from the sky during lunar eclipses. God, I want to live in the time. When, like, dragon teeth fall from the sky during lunar eclipse. Like, that, that's gotta be a... It had to have been wild to live back then. Yeah, but, like, also, your medicine for if you got, like, poisoned or toxins in you was, uh... Was those those fallen supposed dragon tongues. Uh, because they believed that they were a remedy <sighs> to cure poisons and toxins such as snake bites. So imagine getting bit by a snake and then being, like... Yeah, here, take this, uh, I guess, petrified steak tongue, but it's really just a megalodon tooth. Um, yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, take that. Careful riding your horse, because if the hairs fall out of its tail, it turns into eels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Be careful. Watch out. Do not do not put those horse hairs in your butt. Or do. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. That is not how you make a violin bow, sir. <laughs> So the other weird thing is, like, absolutely people had seen shark's teeth at this point, right? But yeah. they still believe that they're, like, these weird tongue stones. It's very confusing. Very, very confusing. Um, anyhow, I love this picture. Yeah, so this is a, actually kind of an important picture because it, it depicts... So the picture in question is the head of a shark dis- dissected, and it depicts a megalodon tooth in a drawing, and it's a drawing of a, like... Wait. shark that was I, I'll, I'll get into it i have it in here so, so that's an actual like accurate drawing of like musculature like someone actually dissected and drew i don't know how accurate that musculature is right but this is a this is something that somebody in the renaissance era did draw uh while like, looking so at a wh- shark what i'm getting is like if i peel the skin off a shark's head it just has a normal human nose under it no that's no. what that looks that looks red i want that as a tattoo <laughs> it's, it's like a fucking sick picture uh, so in the renaissance era there were two competing theories about the origin of tongue stones um which is surprising to me the uh the first asserted that they were produced by a mineral growth process um which uh is weird but not falling from lunar eclipses weird um yeah more believable yeah, the other more or less described the f- process of fossilization. So one of the two was actually pretty much right. Um, after dissecting the head of a shark in 1667, Danish naturalist Nicolas Sten- Seno would make a cr- the would correct would make the correct argument. Wow, that tongue stones were in fact fossilized shark teeth in the head of a shark dissected, oh. which is this. So I-, I guess it is based on the dissection of the of the head. 
So Sharks I don't know. Have normal human noses. I mean, I wouldn't call that a normal human nose, but sharks nose. Let's see. You keep reading. I have to get to the bottom of this. Okay, sharks cool. Nose. Cool. So shark nose no- human. What? So oh, I, sorry. I got excited because is, oh, I don't want to see this. Okay, yeah. Um. <laughs> so. So notably, Steno depicts depicts a megalodon tooth in the illustration. I think it's the one on the left in this pic- particular picture. Um, megalodon itself would be first recognized as a species in 1843 by Louis Agassiz in Researcher sur les Potions Fossiles, literally fossil fish research, um, who pr- pr- proposed the scientific name Carchodon megalodon. Um, Louis, Louis associated the megalodon with the same genus as the great white shark, Carchodon, um, due to the morphologically similar tooth shape. However, modern researchers believe it to be in the genre, the genus uh, Otodontidae, meaning megalodon is not the predecessor, predecessor of great whites, um, and the similarity in tooth shape was actually uh, ascribed to convergent evolution. There are no known uh. descendants of megalodon alive today. Okay. Yeah. Um, so claims that Megalodon is less extinct than uh, initially assumed are nearly as old as the scientific classification of the species itself. The species itself. So in 1858, the HMS oh, Challenger. Fuck yeah. Uh, Just 1800 fucking ships. That sh- oh, I love all the reports from like ships in the 1800s are amazing. Well, because they actually started to do science at that point. Yeah. Um, so, launched in 1858, the HMS Challenger was a Pearl class Corvette that served the Royal Navy from 1858 until 1878. In 1872, the ship was selected for the naval uh, as the naval vessel for a grand tour spanning 68,000 nautical miles, which is a uh, hundred and twenty five, roughly one hundred twenty six thousand uh, kilometers. Organized by the Royal Society and the University of Edinburgh, um, the journey would last from 1972 to 1876. That's a four-year-long trek. That's too long. Yeah. Um, but it was extremely scientifically impactful, uh, more or less serving as the foundation work for modern-day oceanography. And like, there still are studies conducted on... Uh, specimens that were gathered during this this uh this journey that oh, i still can't get over how long boat rides used to take well this one in particular was super long because they were like trying to be long doing stuff yeah yeah like they they intended to take some time on this one too so um it's it's artificially long it's long because it's long but also artificially long because they're like dredging and stuff like that yeah um during the voyage they identified around 4700 new species of marine life sounded the depths of the mariana trench for the first time you know challenger's deep is named for the hs yeah. challenger oh. um and oh yeah. okay yeah yeah and they launched a new era of oceanography that more or less defined the discipline as i mentioned before in 1873 the hms challenger science team members would dredge up uh several megalodon teeth from 2,385 fathoms in the South Pacific near Tahiti. The tooth would act as a rallying cry for cryptozoologists the world over, as in 1959, Vladimir uh, Turchensky would analyze these teeth in an attempt to date them. Using a technique uh, measured that measured the accumulation of manganese dioxide on the teeth, 1.7 oh. millimeters on one and 3.64 millimeters on the other, he found the two teeth to be 11,333 and 24,209 years old, assuming a growth rate of 0.15 millimeter per thousand years. If accurate, this would be earth-shattering because it would imply that Megalodon was a species that was extant fairly re- recently, geogra- geologically speaking, right? Like When I this- was looking up the... Um- in the Baja Beast episode, the Black Demon, dating shark's teeth is a whole fucking thing. Uh, yes. Like, uh, oh gosh, all the articles of people arguing over stuff that I had to read through on the internet was ridiculous. Yeah, people people will argue to death about 
uh, about shark teeth. Um, I want to note uh, that it's important, to, like it's important to note that this technique employed is not radiocarbon dating, um, which also has its limitations, which I think I actually get into later. Um, instead, Trinetsky uh, used a technique that would be countered in 1970 by uh, Believ and Glickman, who noted that the growth rate was far accelerated uh, using the technique employed and that the teeth had not been encased in manganese dioxide as soon as they were deposited on the ocean floor. They were actually pretty rotten by the time that like, yeah. manganese dioxide came in. Um, bafflingly, other researchers, Rue and Geistover, in 1988, would use the same manganese dioxide te technique to assert that Megalodon teeth were 15,000 to 60,000 years old. As a reminder, the technique had already been discredited for a full 18 years at this point. Now, yeah. being a scientist, that's not super surprising. People, I think people still use the James Experience Questionnaire, and that's like been pretty, like, like pretty soundly debunked as a valuable psychometric tool for like James yeah. research. Um, but, you know, people don't necessarily uh, see that information or what have you. So, like, there is a part of me that doesn't want to completely, uh, like, I don't want to completely say that these people are, like, bad scientists. I will say that they're bad. Uh, they're bad at their literature reviews, though. Yeah, I mean, if you've been doing something and getting adequate or what you believe to be adequate results for a long time... Um, you would definitely be hesitant to change your methodology for testing stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I see that happen. I mean, the, the other, the other important thing to note too, is this is before like internet databases and like, I couldn't, yeah. they couldn't Google scholar it. So there is like, I'm, I'm hesitant to say that they are like willfully bad scientists. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This could they're, just they're be They're not oversight. purposefully doing stuff with the intent of, yeah. you know, of, of you know creating a, a a modern megalodon they were unless they just, are unless, unless they are i mean they, they they could still be doing that but i can see a, a version where they're not doing that yeah yep that's that's the important fact um so uh the megalodon exists in an interesting space in the history of cryptozoology right <clears throat> it's not an explanation for indigenous myth nor does it track the origin of to, its origins to random sightings. Instead, Megalodon is a 100% verifiable creature that we know existed, and there is clear, if limited, ev evidence of its existence, right? So we know for a fact that there was a Megalodon. It is a thing. It absolutely yeah. was there. Um, the Megalodon is a creature of science, not mythology, and the awesome size of the, sh the shark inspires fear and intrigue, right? The public at large was first introduced to Megalodon in 1909 at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City by Brashford Dean, an ichthyologist who had reconstructed a hypothetical Megalodon jaw. The jaw was built under the assumption that Megalodon was closer to 30 meters in length, much larger than today's estimates. Uh, so it was a bit off. However, the damage was done. The sheer scale of Megalodon was burned into the minds of the public, inspiring all manner of popular culture, including the 19, 1975 uh, Jaws. In fact, the original novel was inspired by a wave of interest in the cryptozool inspired a wave of interest in the cryptozoological community. Although, to a pretty middling response, like, yeah. there actually aren't that many cryptozoologists who are like, yeah, Megalodon still exists. Yeah, you, you, I don't see that come up a whole lot in any of the uh, cryptozoological or CFZ stuff or anything like that. I mean, I think I think part of it is because, like, realistically, it's just a big shark, right? Yeah. Like, I think I think that kind of plays a factor in it. Um, because like, yeah, it's cool, but like, it's a big shark. So I think that there's like this degree of like people like. Because, like, everyone perceives sharks as bigger than they actually are a lot of the time, too. Yeah. There's, like, I, I think I think Jaws actually kind of fucked with the public consciousness of shark sizes. And, like... The, and it's it's one of the few, like, um, living dinosaur cryptids that doesn't or I haven't seen uh, YEC try to grab onto. Yeah, it's, it's actually shocking how little young Earth creationists uh, do shit with it, believe it or yeah. not. Yeah. Um... Anywho, so uh, over time, Megalodon gained increasing prominence, uh, appearing in Shark Attack 3, which is a movie uh, from like the aughts, 
video games, and a movie adaptation of the 1997 book, Meg, a novel of deep terror. There's a lot of hay to make here uh, of the Megalodon representing an out for humanity, because if the Megalodon is still alive, it implies that we haven't fucked things so bad if a, a giant shark could survive, right? Like, yeah. there is a there is a an implication that if Megalodon is still alive, we haven't fucked nature so bad that it's... <laughs> like completely irredeemable um because yeah. it, it's basically just like a hey maybe things aren't so bad but uh megalodon's dead as shit people <laughs> <laughs> it's like hey megalodon maybe things aren't so bad is kind of uh um i would say the existence of a megalodon <laughs> being in water kind of offsets that a little bit like, things aren't so bad, but also now we have this shit to deal with. True, true. Um, Now, the size of the ocean does also provide a smokescreen for plausible deniability here, because there's an oft-repeated quote of, we know more about the surface of the moon than we know about the deep sea floor, um, which is kind of it's... deliberately missing the point. Yeah. Like... Like, explicitly missing the point. Now, in 2013, Brandon, the Megalodon entered a new phase in the public consciousness, thanks to everyone's favorite edutainment channel, Discovery. Oh, so now, yeah. Now we're getting into the real shit. Um, this is the shit that this... So, all that other stuff, that was, like, just Megalodon scientific, like, me describing the species, right? Yeah. Now, the we're getting preamble. into the, the preamble. Now we're getting into the shit... Uh, that I had to watch two doc, uh, Discovery specials for, and they weren't good oh, Discovery sorry. specials. They like there are good Discovery specials, but this is like past the prime of Discovery, right? Um, so in 2013, the annual treasure that is Shark Week had a different kind of special in the form of Megalodon: colon, The Monster Shark Lives. The special was an hour and a half documentary. About the investigations of an event that supposedly occurred in April 2013 off the coast of South Africa. The only problem is the whole special is completely false. To make matters worse, not only is this, was the special complete and total fabrication, it opened with the following, like, uh, cards, right? So, and I, this is a direct quote. I watched it, copied down exactly what it says. This is in the version that is on Amazon.com today. Oh, right? God. So, this is... This has not, this is not what originally aired, but even though it's not what, but it's not necessarily what originally aired, it still isn't, let me get to it. So, <laughs> Megalodon was a real shark. Legends of giant sharks persist all over the world. There is still great debate about what they might be. Events in this program has been dra dramatized to explore one of these legends. The program, the following program contains graphic images. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, Brandon. What do you think hearing that disclaimer? Like, what is your thought? What do you think that that implies? Uh, Divorce that's... your knowledge of, like, Megalodon, the monster shark lives, right? Your, your yeah. pre-existing preconceived notions. When you read that, what do you think that that's implying? Oh, God. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, they're, uh, just big size. <laughs> no, the, the. Uh, it's hard reading that to divorce myself from knowledge I already have. Um, I mean, but to just say it's, it's, it's implying that everything that whatever's in the documentary is real, right? Events have been yeah. dramatized to explore these legends. They're saying these things happened in the way that we're showing them to you. We just turned the dial up a little bit. Yes. That that's the implication, right? Yeah. Like, like you're not saying that this is a fictional documentary. You're saying yeah events have been dramatized to explore one of these legends. That can mean literally anything. That is such weak language for a disclaimer, right? Yeah. Now, um, there is no disclaimer that explicitly says the documentary is a work in fiction. And like, like I said before, I purchased this special. I used some of my Amazon credit to buy this special. <laughs> um, and it's a bumper that's taken directly off the version that is currently hosted on Amazon. I could open the video and go directly to the scene and see this bumper right now. Now, 
given the controversy surrounding this special, I am completely shocked that there is no clear indicator of its places of work of fiction in the, the subsequent releases. Now, it gets worse, though, because when the special starts in earnest, another bumper follows, and it is, the following footage was recorded on a charter fishing boat off the coast of South Africa on April 5th, 2013. At which point, it cuts to look what looks like a home video of people on a fishing vessel, apparently having a good time waving at the camera. Discovery expects us, expects us to believe this is real footage, although personally, it does look hella fake, right? Um, yeah. Now, a man has hooked a big one, as he says, and is shown struggling to reel it in. And Brandon, this might be one of the funniest parts of the entire special, because oh, the good. footage cuts from this... There's a black screen. Two hours later is what it says next. Uh, and I shit you not, the same guy is still attempting to catch that fish. <laughs> the stamina of this man. This is some fucking old man in the sea shit. <laughs> An another just book that don't bother. And the old man in the sea so sees okay. It's not as bad as Moby Dick. Brandon, uh, I have I have such a low barrier for a decent book because of Moby Dick. Um the uh just on this real quick so the the we 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 were talking uh before we started airing about I was trying to see if a topic I was thinking about was within the scope of um of our podcast and I got to that from listening to um uh so, some the uh, to the pseudo archaeology podcast which is hosted by various like professors and and, and mm -hmm. professionals and towards the end of the very their episode on the topic I'm thinking about they do uh, say that um, all of the their peers don't even pick up the phone when like when uh, Discovery or History like calls them like because it's so but they're like no like no like reputable scientists will like give them the time like don't even let them start talking to you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, they also mentioned and I haven't looked it up that um, Brian Dunning of um, Skeptoid has yeah. a uh like i think he has a gofundme or something like he's trying to make documentaries um and have the scientists on that refuse to uh work with these networks uh because they're afraid of what the edits are going to be and just make basically a documentary m made by actual um uh scientists about topics without like the uh the, a network trying to drive ad revenue through it that's pretty cool yeah cuz uh yeah that they it's not great. It's not great. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's really not great. not great. It's really not great. Um, now, Brandon, personally for me, uh, the moment where they jump two hours ahead and the dude's still working on catching this fish, that's yeah. the point where I'm like, okay, so this is clearly a joke. Yeah. Right. Um, but Brandon, it gets worse. Uh, <laughs> Losing the fish on the line, the guy is naturally mad because clearly he just wasted two hours trying to land a fish and has yeah. nothing but some shoddy camera footage to show for it. Uh, that being said, they're not angry for long, so there's a that's a silver lining. Uh, because the folk get, boat gets fucking capsized but what, by what we're believed to be uh, Megalodon. That's right, Brandon. Really? This fictional documentary, presented as fact, shows us fo footage of people fucking dying. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> like that is the implication here people are fucking dying this is footage of people's last moments and it's just being shown on a fucking discovery documentary right yeah and then the show jumps into a fake news report uh, from some generic news channel to sell the fact that this footage we saw was real, which is grim as fucking shit, oh, Discovery. Yeah. Holy shit. Right? They're, like, oh. they're trying to convince us that these human beings actually died <laughs> and that we just saw their last moments, which is fucked up. <laughs> it's very fucked up. I love the uh, screenshot of their... Uh, uh, fucking news thing <laughs> oh yeah it, it's so clearly like super generic news it's it, it, it it's not high quality it's mm -mm. the filter the fi just the filter that they put on yeah they put a crt filter on it yeah it has scan lines 
This was released in in 2013, folks. Yeah. Um, HDTV was a thing. So, um, to make matters work, Brandon, like, cause, cause that's the whole entirety of this this documentary is make matters yeah. worse, right? Uh, they then cut to the wreckage of the boat that has clearly been mangled by something with teeth, right? At this point, the hero of the story enters the picture, Colin Drake. Oh, good. Now, this documentary presents him as a marine biologist, but keep in mind, I'm watching this on Amazon and they have x-ray. So I notice his name is on there and he has a, he has a headshot. So I click on it um, and he's clearly not a, marine bi- not a marine biologist, but instead an actor named Darren Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so X-Ray, for people who don't watch um, Amazon video, as you're watching a show on Amazon, what X-Ray is, is it's got um, clickable links to all of the actors in the scene that you're watching at the moment. So when they presented this marine biologist, John saw the actor playing him pop up on the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so I, uh, I looked into it. He's an actor who's appeared in Generation Kill. A direct, the direct to DVD hit Free Willy: Escape from Pirates Cove. Oh, good. one episode of Doctor Who in 2020 in a liter- litany of edutainment shows. Keep in mind, when this special aired, he had credits on at least 14 shows and movies. At least. <sighs> so, according to the special, Colin Drake. Uh, is who they call him when weird shit happens in the ocean, and his specialty is regarding sharks. The narrative introduces a p- potential perpetrator at the atta- for the attack at this point, a 30-foot great white shark who is known to the locals as Submarine. Um, Such a cool name. It is a pretty good name. It's so cool. It's a pretty good name, I will say. It's Submarine not bad. Submarine doesn't strike fear. It's not a bad name. Also, submarine kind of does strike fear a little bit because it could be a nuclear submarine. Well, nuclear submarine, that, that it, it's. Well, yeah. nuclear submarine is a spinoff of submarine. Like, like that's yeah. his child. That's the one that, that comes after you kill nu- submarine. <laughs> it's the Godzuki. <laughs> well, I was thinking more like Godzilla Jr. from Hesse. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's the same difference. Um, so here, an actress who actually does only have one leg, Catherine Kempko, uh, who plays a local surfer, Jess Oscar, um, allegedly lost her leg while surfing in the twilight to submarine. And I do want to give Discovery a minuscule amount of credit because they use an Afri- actual South African woman who had an amputation. Now, okay. it's not a massive <laughs> credit, but... You but know, the bar's I'll, not high. The bar is not it, high. The bar is not yeah. high. The bar is not very high at all. Now, remember, they have not explicitly said that any of the talking heads are actors and are portraying this as real as far as most watchers are concerned, right? Nobody's gonna think yeah. this is a this is an actress, right? Um, necessarily. So, and I skip over a fuck ton of content here. Because it's God. really just to use to make this episode look like a normal episode of Shark Week. What well, is Michael Bay for this? That lens flare. Well, actually, Michael Bay isn't lens flare. You're thinking of um, the guy who made uh, Star Trek. What was that? Um, who's Wait, the one who did Star Trek? Lens. Star Trek has flare lens flare. Director. Oh, J.J. A- Abrams. I just Googled yeah. lens flare director and J.J. Abrams was the first thing yeah, that came yeah. up. Yeah, this was this was a J.J. Abrams piece. You know, we had Stanley Kubrick for the the moon landing, and we have uh, J.J. Abrams for a picture of submarine. They um, used the exact same lens flare that I used when editing my like my space pictures. Pretty much, it's it's so clearly fake. Like, look up. You should look up uh, the the picture from um uh uh. Mo- Megalodon, the monster shark lives because it is one of the dumbest fucking pictures ever. The 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 fin is so incredibly clearly fake. Like like if you look at the the shark fin, not only is there not enough like water being kicked up, but like it looks like somebody photoshopped it into the scene because it's got like the blur tool around the edges. Oh, good. So, um, skipping over a bunch of contact 
which I said before, um, we get our next piece of clearly fabricated evidence, which we've been talking about. Um, apparently, a shark eye volunteer, Abina Marie, not only saw the alleged su- submarine, but took a photo of it. Bafflingly, despite filming her from a position that is clearly overlooking the cove that the photo has been taken from, the photo is from sea level and apparently depicts a large shark and a whale in the waters of the cove. The photo, as I said, is Ugh. laughably b- bad. Um, it, it's it's so like clearly bad, and like they talk about the fact that it's like, oh, that shark's fin is six feet out of the water, and blah 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 blah, and yada yada yada. Um, Drake at this point chimes in and says, I know we aren't looking for submarine. We're looking for something much bigger. Um, oh, good. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Goodwin's Law, Brandon. Have you? Uh, it's something about uh, it, it time to Nazi. Yeah, pretty basically. much. It's as, as, as online discussion gets longer, compar- comparison to Nazism approach one, right? There is a yeah. guarantee that someone's going to bring up Nazis at some point. Um, yeah. So there should, however, be a corollary for edutainment, uh, because any edutainment that explores something that takes place during the 20th century is uh, like legally bound to sh- to d- depict something Nazi related. Yeah, because or a you know, Nazi U boo or something you know like what that. The Nazis were most l- known for was their love of sharks. <laughs> so, um. Drake alleges that the same shark may have been seen in a picture taken by a Nazi U-boat. Now, bear in mind, Brandon, the fin is exactly the same. Wait. Wait. It is literally the same fin. They did they just made it black and white. Yes! It is it is literally this and not only that Brandon it gets I'm just worse. I'm scrolling up and down. It's the, it's you it is the actual same fin. It is literally the same fin and you know what's even worse? They um they they in the special they crossfade between the two. Yeah. Um and let me see if I can find it. Uh They crossfeed between the fade between the two and it it somehow makes it even more obvious that it's the same thing because Duh. they literally have them overlaid so you can see that like there is there is literally no change between the two <laughs> it is astonishingly bad and you would think you would think that whoever was editing this wouldn't like allow those two pictures to be seen so close together yeah um or at the very or, least, you know, you'd... flip the image 180 so it at they... least is slightly different. <laughs> Brandon, that's the worst part. The image was flipped 180 at first. Oh, and God. then <laughs> they do a comparison shot that flips the image 180 degrees to show it that it's the literal same fin. <laughs> Good. Like, uh, you would expect that if the shark has been around for over 100 years or like close to 100 years... Um, its fin would at least change a little bit, right? But like, yeah. no, there might be some battle scars or something on it, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, you. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I think I have the yeah, I have I have the section right here. So, um, let me try and share my screen to show you this because it's fucking dumb as shit. This <laughs> this this special is one of the single fucking dumbest dumbest things right uh yeah let me see if you're trying to show something off amazon silver light will probably bl- uh, block it oh will it that's yeah, unfortunate yeah Let's yeah and they um they i can't even like amazon video won't play if i have like my uh screen capture from like when i play video games on really yeah yeah it it checks for um capture software. Interesting. I've I've been able to I was able to to, to record bits, I think. Oh. Maybe they uh changed what they do. I use OBS to do it and I record the like entire screen though, typically. Gotcha. There was um, a period of time where they wouldn't even let me do um a snipping tool. I had to like find a oh, workaround. Really? Yeah. That's weird. That's fair use. Um okay. Let's see if oh, you can I see, see it. this. You see it? Yep. 
All right, give me a second. My computer's slow as shit. Okay. Okay, I. Th all right, I see. I see the picture. I see a boat. Yeah, but but do and, you see? Oh God! Do you see? Wait, they overlaid the fins on top of each other and then faded. They're yes! showing you it's the same fin. Yes. When you said crossfade, I didn't realize they lined the fins up directly on top of each other. Yes. They literally oh. lined the fins up directly on top of each other. Like Oh. Like when I say they're on top of each other, I mean they're like like they clearly show you it is the same fin. It is the same it's, literal it's the same fin taken from the same angle with the camera perspective at the same height. Yes. <laughs> it's baffling. <laughs> And the shark's they... the exact same distance out from the fewer. Yes. It's ridiculous. Oh. It's the dumbest fucking shit you've ever seen. So, um, at, it takes about a third of the special to get there. But finally, at this point, after showing the, the photo of a half-eaten tailless whale, which is in the show notes, um, they finally suggest totally that it picture. could... Yes. They finally <laughs> suggest it could be a megalodon. And I quote, this is literally what they say in the special, the serial killer of the sea. Oh, good. Good. That's literally everything in the sea. Yes. They don't, there's no animal going to get like vegan food. Well, no, that's, that's not well, entirely I mean, that's, true. That's not true. You can, you can, have, you can have phytoplankton. Like, most of the things in the sea are eating other things that are in the sea. Yes. Yes. They have to kill them to yes. survive. Yes, you're not a serial killer if you're eating other things to survive. Yeah, they don't have um, uh, Beyond fucking whale or whatever for the yeah. sharks to eat. <laughs> oh, man. Um, they then proceed, proceed to say that the Megalodon was 100 feet long. It wasn't. And they get colonialism all over Megalodon. Um, first, they say that the Polynesians have a 100-foot shark uh, in their mythology called the Lord of the Deep, which I couldn't find any credible sources on. Uh, then they mentioned a supposed Indo Indonesian myth about a family of 75-foot shark that ruled the sea. Once again, no clear sources. Finally, they mentioned Cryptopedia alum El Diablo Negro, which is the black devil or black Woo. demon. Um, a 60-foot shark said to haunt the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. I believe the episode was called Baja Be Beast that we talked about that. Yeah, um, it was called uh, Baja Beast. Now, this is a classic cryptozoological move, appealing to ancient wisdom bias, right? Attempting to explain legends away with cryptids, right? We've talked about this in the past, but it's yeah. not a good look, folks, because they're more or less appropriating cultural mythology to support their claims, right? Yeah. It's it's not great. It's not a great look. Um, And I don't talk about this because it's very dumb and it's like you barely can see anything. They also have a, another very, very, very clearly fake video uh, that shows a shark fin in the water. Um, oh, good. At like uh, at like a very deep sea camera level that would be like massive, right? Yeah. But like it's it's clearly fake, and I'm not even gonna bother showing it because like it's fake in a way that's not funny. Um. So, in response to the bombshells, uh, this document tree creates some false tension. Drake is all in on the cryptid, cryptid is, Megalodon as a cryptid hypothesis, while some of his scientific collaborators are opposed. These character exists as strongmen straw men um for drake to discount and part for the course for paranormal documentaries right they, they're they literally just there so they can yeah. look like idiots yeah, yeah 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 um they also wholly fabricated newspaper article that states a megalodon tooth was found at the base of rappahannock river in virginia and was radiocarbon dated to 1300 years old Ugh. so uh i this was not i couldn't find the article i searched for the exact text couldn't find yeah. it and then as i looked at it i'm like i'm pretty sure that that's just like somebody went into word or photoshop and took like a newspaper font and just typed a thing up um probably because that's probably what they did yeah so um now colin drake points out noting it was only a hundred years ago that a megalodon tooth was discovered and accurately carbon dated to be a hundred to be ten thousand years old. Bear in mind, Brandon, uh, the time that this would have happened a hundred years ago uh, is before radiocarbon dating even existed. <laughs> so 
Not only that, it. it's functionally worthless for a specimen that's as old as Megalodon. So there's yeah. no point whatsoever in even bothering to carbon date a Megalodon tooth because it becomes useless at that point. Um, now, because the documentary is by the numbers bullshit, they then justify this hypothesis by using everyone's favorite excrypted, the coelacanth. Oh, now, yeah. In addition to using terms like living fossils, they invoke the Lazarus ta taxon, which really is a fancy way of saying sampling errors. <laughs> um, I'm I I fucking hate I fucking hate the coelacanth uh, <laughs> excuse. Um, we talked about it before. It's the dumbest shit ever just because the coelacanth because here's the thing. Scientists found out that the coelacanth was still existing. Dudes yeah. were fishing up coelacanths in their nets all the fucking time, probably. Yeah. They, well, they, 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 because they were just another fish that's in that area. Yes. It's just like, oh, it's just a fish. Who fucking yeah. cares? It wasn't until, gosh, I'm trying to remember what the, the story was. It wasn't until. It wasn't I until a white person saw it. It basically. was a British sci scientist kept going, like, because they, they were just on the fishing docks and he would, like, but they kept like rotting in transportation or whatever, trying to send it to um, uh, uh -huh. whatever museum to to validate. But yeah, yeah, it wasn't like it was always there. They always knew about it. It wasn't until some like white guy showed up and tried to bring the fish back with them. Uh huh. Pretty uh, much. That's that's were, yeah. That's ninety percent of living fossils. Is it's a white person finding it for the first time. Yeah, they've just like, always been there. They're just another I mean, for all the folk there. It's just another fish. Well, silverback gorillas, right? Same thing. Yeah. It wasn't real until white people saw it. Yeah. And then it's real. Then it's real. Then it's a real thing, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they then highlight the fact that sharks thrive in warmer climates. In fact, Brandon, uh, sharks are common in depths greater um, uh, in, up until depths of like 20,000 meters, right? Yeah. But they're more or less absent after... 30,000 meters, right? That's an important yeah. factor to remember because this will come up. This will come up. Um, so they, this is such a baffling, like they, they have so many internal logical consistencies in this documentary, yeah. this documentary quotes. Um, at this point, things somehow go more off the rails um, because they just keep repeating the same information over and over again. Right. They show a video of a supposed megalodon in Brazil and an extremely shitty video. And honestly, I'm skipping over 40 minutes of the documentary because, like, frankly, they're just boring. Right. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> it's just boring to watch. It's there well, to make the, it look like a real documentary. It, the problem is they also have time to fill. Mm hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of filler in some of these things. <laughs> yes. There's a fuck ton of filler. That's most of the problem. Right. Um, now just to like cover some of the things they do, they make a whale decoy and decide to make a five mile long chum slick for some reason. Like, I, I, I don't get it. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me why they would make it five miles long. Right. Um, wait, like a continuous, not just like, like chumming an area, like the, it's a continuous, a continuous five mile, five mile slick. God, I hate to work on that boat that day. I can't think yeah. of any reason for it, right? But the whole reason for, like, chumming just a local spot is because, like, they have a good sense of smell. They'll, yeah. they'll come to you. You don't have yeah. to do five fucking miles. Why would you do five miles? Like, what's the point of doing five miles? And then the other thing is, like, you chum a local area so they come to you. If you chum a five-mile area then you have to continuously observe a five-mile area. <laughs> yes, it's stupid as shit. Yeah. It's so dumb. Um, they then show some underwater cameras of the slick, Brandon, and there, there are clearly CGI sharks in the water. I'm not shitting you. Like, Oh, good. Clearly CGI. And if you scroll down on our, our thing, I have a few images. Uh, yeah. There's a badly composited shark from Brazil. I, oh, I good. drew an outline around it because... It just looks like black spots. And then the the video image of the chum slick oh, is pretty God. great. John, that's not even CG. Like, they just used... They just used a multiply overlay. Yeah. 
it's it's not it's not chum slick it's just red water they just took water and and put like red over it and set the opacity to like 50 percent and then painted out the the like little whale decoy oh god so bad it's so bad it it's not even that's the lowest effort there's no effort. It's it's nothing. Now that's uh, come on. That uh, uh Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Um So then the climax comes for the film, and two oh, scientists good. enter the water in a shark cage, which let's be real, Brandon, if this shark were actually fucking megalodon, it would do goddamn nothing. Literally nothing. Whatsoever. <laughs> Right? Like, what's the fucking point of having a shark cage if you're trying to go up against a megalodon? Right? Yeah. Almost immediately after getting into the cage, the ship shakes and the decoy is attacked. Luckily, they're able to harpoon the possible megalodon, planting a tracker. Immediately, the tracker dives to 6,500 feet and is lost. For reference, Brandon, that's about (laughs) the extent of the common range for a shark, roughly 2,000 meters. Right? Yeah. And the special ends with the following text. None of the institutions or agencies that appear in this film are affiliated in any way, nor have approved its contents. Though certain events and characters in this film have been dramatized, sightings of submarine continue to this day. Megalodon was a real shark. Legends of giant sharks persist all over the world. There is still a debate about what they may be. Now, the executive producer of Shark Week, uh, Michael Sorison would later point to this disclaimer as being sufficient to indicate that the program was fiction. No, 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 that, it's no, not. No, it's no, it's not. It's really not. It's really the disclaimer not. Disclaimer should be like other disclaimers. I see this is a work or, or the following program is a work of fiction like that. You, that's a real thing that you can put on that's things. A, that's a thing you see frequently. Yeah. And yeah, it makes sense because it's a work of fucking fiction. Tell people that. But no, yeah. no. Um, also, I have a screenshot of the one image of Megalodon they have in here, and it's basically a black screen. That's I, the payoff to the entire documentary is a black wait, screen. Wait, I thought that was just a black screen. No, that, no, that, that that is a screenshot when they have the picture, they, when they have Megalodon on the screen. That is the side of Megalodon. It is basically a black screen. It's just a black... I just thought... It looks like a black square, and I just need to, like... I thought I just had to clean my monitor. <laughs> no, it's it's not just a black square. It's not just a black square. There is, like, small shark skin there. Um, Now, Brandon, more or less instantly, there was pretty severe blowback uh, to this documentary. Now, at this point, uh, document, doc, Discovery still had, like, a shred of credibility in 2013, right? Because this yeah. is like, like you know, people still believe that Discovery was not like openly lying to them, right? Yeah. Animal Planet had already screwed the entertainment pooch because the Mermaid and Dragon documentaries had already come out. Yeah. Um, but Discovery still cled to the shreds of uh, credibility. Um, Discovery had an online poll asking uh, if people believe that the Megalodon was still alive after the special aired. Horrifyingly. 73 what? responded yes. Although let's be real, um like uh it, it I, I question how authentic this is because I know the internet and I know oh. what communities were active at the time. So yeah. uh they probably juiced those numbers, but that being said, uh it represented a downward trend in Discovery's credibility, right? With some point oh, in the yeah. channel effectively aligning with answers in Genesis. More on that <laughs> in a second. Now In response to criticism, Lori Goldberg, a spokesperson for the network, had the following to say. We have found that people are open to exploring different ideas and concepts in addition to the more traditional fare that we air. That would explain the ratings. As in any entertainment, you're you're not going to please everyone, but we stand behind all of our content and are proud of it. The special used a novel storytelling device to engage that imagination and curiosity in a way that was disclosed to the audiences throughout the program. It was not. No, no, it wasn't. Because uh. if it was disclosed to the audience throughout the program, yes, that's actually kind of an okay way to do it. As long as everyone knows it's fucking fake. 
right? Yeah, like if the pro, if it's like the the events you're about to see are a work of fiction, and they're they're just telling the story of if Megalodon was to be found today, here's how we think it might go. Yes, that's if I did what it. they did. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Brandon, oh, the rating, the special was a ratings smash hit, being the most watched Shark Week show to date with 4.8 million viewers. Naturally, this would not be the end of Megalodon on the Discovery Channel, as next year there was an episode of Shark Week called Megalodon, The New Evidence. And yes, Brandon, I watched that too. John, Have mercy upon my soul. My question is, is there new evidence? So... So, real evidence or or what they call evidence? Because those are two very, very different things. <laughs> There's, was, uh, was there any new legitimate evidence found in the years very recent to the to the release of that? Because new evidence, <laughs> like I mean, like within the last five years of when one of our aired. I would, like would have to be new evidence or whatever. No, no, there was no fucking new evidence. Well, <laughs> There's clearly no new evidence. This is a fucking bullshit ass fake documentary. Um, right. Like there's, there's nothing, nothing new here, but I will say the second documentary is kind of fucking hilarious. And I'll get into that in a sec. We'll, I'll be showing Did they you catch one. It's in sea world now. No, it's way dumber than that. It's it's so much dumber than that. But um okay. I have it queued. I have the the next video queued up. So oh, cuz you have to see this, right? So Megalodon the New Evidence is a direct sequel to Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives, this time in the format of a studio interview between Colin Drake and a host with various quotes expert popping in to offer their thoughts. Wait, so Colin Drake returns? Yes. Hell yeah. And everyone already knows that he's an actor, by the way. Um, somehow, the special was more unhinged than the first. To begin, there's, no once again, no clear disclaimer of the fictional nature of the documentary, which you will hope there to be. Um, also, I want to say, this documentary, it feels, you know those, uh, those, um, those, 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 uh, uh, Adult Swim infomercials, right? Yeah. Like, uh, the one with like the the lost book of the Bible and like mm. uh, the the like uh, the one with the dog like Alpha Chow or whatever. Yeah, I swear to God, this this documentary feels like it was directed by someone who directed one of those. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> so um, now they put forward a new narrative in this documentary that there is a government cover up preventing Colin Drake from researching Megalodon further in South Africa. Amazing implying that Megalodon would be bad for business, so they just want to sweep it under the rug um, for what I assume to be tourism regions. Not to be outdone by the first special, as the name implies, there is new evidence of living Megalodon. However, the CGI budget somehow got cut even, <laughs> even lower. Oh, oh um, man. Because my favorite, my favorite uh, evidence appears in the first eight minutes of the documentary. And Brandon, uh, don't scroll too far. Uh, no, no, I, 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 no, I won't. Okay, because, um, because there's some footage of taken at night, uh, of what what is clearly a CGI pod of whales, um, and uh, let me let me just show you this, and uh, it's it's next level, like, <laughs> like the 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 last one was bad, but like. Yeah. Like oh this God. one is somehow even worse. I so I have it. Bad content. I have it on a freeze frame of the dude who supposedly uh, shot the footage, right? Yeah. Um, oh, he looks cool. Yeah, he looks cool. So let's hit play. <laughs> so he's what? What? Yeah. Is he giving a TED talk? It's yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait. Let me let me go back to this is this is the actual footage. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, I went too far. But do you see oh, what yeah. I do? You see what I mean when I yeah. say that this 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 sounds like a uh 
like it the dude's talking like he's in an adult swim in from okay here we go so opens up talking about seeing six whales are those those aren't real those no those are are clearly cgi those are those are very not real whales yeah yeah oh 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 good oh perfect. yeah so you saw that right yeah you saw that that was totally what? real right that there's so there's real there's nothing about that that looked fake to you right like whatsoever <laughs> um so it's clearly a footage of a, a cgi pot of whales and the cameraman is obviously 80 yard into the scene there's, right? i love bad adr so much. it's clear adr if you're listening if you watch it it's it's the fucking most obvious goddamn adr it's adr by the way if people don't know what adr is it's after something's recorded sometimes yeah. you need to get better quality audio or something to come out quite right or just for like storytelling or editing change. purses the script change or you'll mm-hmm. they'll they'll go and re-record some audio and mm-hmm. you'll hear that. You'll see it a lot in movies where, like, someone's back is to the camera. <laughs> yep. And it's, like, clearly not... It's clearly different audio. Like, to the point that it's, like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah, well, it's um, clearly, like, recorded in a sound studio versus from, like, a yeah. boom or a lav mic that's hitting yeah. somewhere. <laughs> it, it, they don't even try. They don't even try most of the time. Um, so he's yelling about how nice the Caribbean is. When one of the whales, which is a sperm whale, as uh, uh, what's his name points out later, Colin Drake, um, it's suddenly attacked and pulled out of the water by a shark that attacked by be- from below. Now, as I mentioned before, it's a shame this is an audio medium because this is laughably bad. Like, it's like, so not good. The fact that they thought that this would be this would play at all is just redonkulous to me. Um. Because it's even funnier because I showed you the faux an- satellite interview. But Brandon, what I didn't show you is they fake delays. They fake satellite delays. Oh, come on. So like the dude's talking and then they'll pause for a second. Because I think that they're like implying that this is either live or yeah, like, something along those lines. I don't know. Um, I'm going to skip around though because most of the evidence in this episode is bad photoshops. But they do supposedly get hold, a hold of a new megalodon tooth, which a quote-unquote fossil expert insists is not only a megalodon tooth, but a fresh one because of the lightness of its coloration. Oh, f- fantastic. To make matters worse, Brandon, they call the tooth a marine artifact. Now, if you know anything about what an artifact is, a tooth is literally the fucking opposite of an artifact because... <laughs> Uh, an artifact requires a human makes it. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the whole point. It's the whole yeah. point of an artifact. The real twist oh. of this documentary, however, is Colin Drake believes that there are multiple Megalodon because the tracker from the first special pinged after six months. Bear in mind that shark nurseries are in, typically in shower water and a shark would almost certainly not spend six months at that depth because the lack of food necessary to sustain a Michael Phelps worth of shark. Right. <laughs> Like, yeah. like, like. Keep in mind, this is supposed to be a megalodon. It needs eight Michael Phelps worth of food a day, right? Yeah. And at certain depths, you just don't have the calorie content necessary to maintain something that size. It's yeah. just a fact, right? Now, um, the reason for this is because he finds that there's additional evidence of me- megalodon in the Brazil uh, at the same time right as this like okay. pain happens drake makes the assertion that there is more than one legged ladon and the one featured in the first special was in fact pregnant which is why she was so ag- aggressive it's the godzilla 2000 megalodon pretty much oh well it's uh it's it's godzilla it's 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 godzilla 1998 because godzilla 2000 is a distinct movie oh, that is gotcha. a japanese godzilla movie that has um uh it has a uh what is it Ogra, I think, is the name of the kaiju that he fights against. Um, that is a very different movie. Uh, no, no, Godzilla so, two, wasn't Godzilla two thousand the one with in Ma- Madison Square Garden. You're thinking of Zilla, and that's I think 1998, if my memory is correct. Oh, gotcha. Uh, let me see. God, Zilla, uh, 1998. Let's see. Yeah, you're correct. Yes. It was just called Godzilla. It's from 98. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It has Matthew Broderick, um, a.k.a. the guy that killed two people in Ireland. <laughs> yes. I will say this. I will say this. This is a controversial opinion. I know I've talked about this on the podcast before. I actually like Godzilla 1998. You do? I'm I do. surprised. I do, but not as a Godzilla movie. If as they... a kaiju movie, I like it. Gotcha. It's I don't consider it a god if you don't if you don't consider it a Godzilla movie, because it's missing several of the like key attributes of what make Godzilla Godzilla. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like um so like I don't consider it a Godzilla movie because it's it's missing missing thematic elements that are necessary. But as a kaiju movie goes, it could be way worse. I think it's a my solid dad seven. Has it on DVD? Would it make it better if I ripped the DVD and I did the ADR to every time they say the word Godzilla, something else? <laughs> <laughs> I have I have it on 4K ultra high definition. You have that? You made that choice? I did. I did. John, Brandon, I am a fucking Godzilla simp. So. John, uh, I made a choice. It was also a Michael Broderick one. It was ridiculously cheap too. So I bet it was. <laughs> it wasn't a hard decision because I got it for basically nothing. Um, That's the only reason that movie would be in 4K is because like the space in the warehouse that was holding those discs, like 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 the, the overhead got too high and they needed to just get rid of them somehow <laughs> they're selling them at a loss i i think there's a person who has a collection of vhs copies of uh godzilla in 1998 who's just been slowly amassing them i mean i do like a really like a, an oddly sp specific thing to collect so that Listen, i'm all for if you have a m fresh minty seal godzilla 1998 get in contact with me I'll find a way for you to send it to me, and I'll take it. You're not going to get anything out of it. I'll just take it. I'll have it. If you don't <laughs> want it, I'll take it. That's all. That's all. Honestly, any Godzilla VHSs, just send them my way. I'll take them. I have a small Godzilla VHS collection. I've got yeah. Godzilla 1985 here on VHS. Oh, yeah. The version yeah. that's never been re-released. you got a P.O. box. <laughs> I don't have a P.O. box, but I'll make one if you send me Godzilla VHSs. And they have to be real Godzilla VHSs. No, like, no, like, no like re sleeving, shit. like, yeah, equestrian contests. Yeah, make them make make send me real ones, and they have to have their sleeves, because otherwise, like, what's the point? What are we doing here? Um. <laughs> anywho, uh, he bolsters it's, the. It's gonna be a real Godzilla VHS in a real sleeve, but they're gonna wait. 49 minutes in they were going to replace five minutes of it with just mr hands on a loop and then it's going to go oh. back to godzilla <laughs> god well you see that's actually uh that's uh that's actually godzilla versus mecha godzilla 2 the like mr hands cut <laughs> uh, it actually exists <laughs> um so uh he bolsters this claim uh of there being a pregnant megalodon with an extremely fake bit of CGI, which supposedly showing a baby megalodon off the coast of Australia. And I have that picture right here. Um, is that what I'm supposed to be seeing here in this is a baby megalodon? Yes, that's what you're supposed to be seeing. And it totally looks like, uh, also I like the fact that the megalodon in this picture's fin has like little nicks taken out of it. Right. Yet yeah. the megalodon from the first movie has a perfectly intact dorsal fin. Yeah. Despite being hundreds of years, a hundred years old or something like that. At least um, they had enough foresight to put the uh, sun ray reflection on the back on this one. It's so bad. It's so fucking God. Bad. So um, here the special takes a turn towards the dangerous though, because the Colin Drake character puts on a, puts out a call of action uh, to viewers to take the Megalodon seriously so we can deal with the problem before the species proliferates due to prime conditions for its return, despite the fact that there are so many larger ecological problems than a fictional shark. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. 
Um, additionally, there's a meta review episode of the Megalodon Shark Week episodes in 2018 that more or less identified the series of specials as bullshit called Megalodon Fact versus Fiction uh, that was more or less a tie-in for the movie The Meg. Um, basically, uh. the entirety of it is like people being like, no, that's a fucking, that, there's nothing real about that documentary. That's fucking stupid. What the fuck? I didn't watch yeah. it, but that from what I read, that's basically the entirety of it. Um, there was also a weird documentary that was called Shark of Darkness, <laughs> Wrath of Submarine. What? <laughs> Which oh, I could only on. assume to be another sequel. I didn't watch either of those because my brain can only take so much damage in one episode for this show. Um I do love the fact that they called it Shark of Darkness as a clear play on Heart of Darkness, a movie yeah. about the Vietnam War. Oh, good. Um, I think you got so, Wrath of Submarine. They could be trying to pull Wrath of Khan. Possibly. They but might be just, just, like combining and, and shitting out movie titles. They're, they're just throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks at this point. Um... Now, this might sound like a cop-out, but Brandon, there is basically not that much evidence that I can find on the internet of people believing Metagaton is a still living creature, right? Like, people don't really believe that Megalodon is still alive, right? No, which is surprising. I mean, uh, here's what I said. I said, like, I think um, in the Discord, I've said on record that, like, I mean... I don't think that, like, a still-living Megalodon is the most insane of cryptids, but if it did exist, it would be a s- distinct species at this point because it would have to have changed its behavior significantly. Um, yeah. And, like, the way it exists significantly, at which point it doesn't... It's not a Megalodon anymore, so it's a moot point, right? Um, yep. But regardless... uh. Most of the belief that I do find seems to stem from the Discovery Channel documentaries. And even going to the bellwethers of the Young Earth creationism, um, most just seem to mischaracterize the time Megalodon went extinct, with them saying it was like the Great Flood that killed off Megalodon. Yeah. Uh, Most support for a living Megalodon only came in the form of a vague suggestion that the ocean is big. So maybe they aren't all dead, right? Yeah. Yeah. The most egregious thing I can find that was related to Megalodon, though, is a claim that sharks haven't evolved. Uh, In an article from 2001, their claim is, The fossil record is clearly consistent with the fact that that sharks have always been sharks and not evolved from non-sharks. Which is the dumbest single sentence I've ever read for this. One of the dumbest single sentences I've ever read for this podcast. I had to caveat that because there's a lot of dumb sentences I've read. Um, now that being said, uh, scientists have found cousins to sharks with common ancestors some 42 million year- years ago in the form of chimeras. Um, also due to their stat- status as cartilaginous fish, there is little left in the fossil record behind beyond teeth and scales and the occasional yeah. vertebrae. So like, how does the fossil record clearly show that they have always been like, There's, like they've that always has... had teeth. So they've always been the same. Cause like the morphology is not very clear. Like the difference in morphology is not evident just from teeth and vertebrae necessarily. So like, what the fuck? Also, we know that hammerhead sharks are a relatively recent evolutionary change to sharks. So like, like on every level, their ro- their claim is wrong. Yeah. Um, so I was laughing cause I was imagining like a shark fossil with like a pair of rollerblades next to it like in street sharks and it 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 made me very happy (laughs) so um the creationist claims in this particular case are are characteristically hollow but that being said i'm pretty sure that very few young earth creationists actually believe megalodon still rose the sea like i don't think that that's like a thing that's like popular which is so bizarre to me because like when you compare megalodon to ropin Megalodon, like, has this sense it's, of higher credibility. Yeah, like, significantly like, higher credibility than, like, rope, the Ropin or uh, Mokele Membe well, or, or because, any of these other, like, living dinosaurs. They because we have blue push. whales, we have whale sharks, we have large fish and mammals in the water, right? Yeah. Like, I don't think that it's 
I don't think that it's the case, but like there is a legitimate like you can make a legitimate argument that there's more it's more likely that a megalodon exists than a, a fucking pterodactyl. Yeah. And right? then also for if they're open ex- or, uh, for megalodon to exist, you don't have to try to appropriate other people's culture. Correct. You just go, look, there's still a big shark. You don't have to do all the other shit. Yeah, it's very strange. It, and But ultimately, even if a megalodon-like creature existed, it wouldn't be fucking megalodon. Anyways... It's been fucking three million years. There would be some form of evolution that happened. Yeah. Whatever. I, I don't... That's that's the fucking episode. I don't have any, anything else. The, the, the fucking... The documentaries were terrible. The Plus, documentaries. If there's a new, new, air quotes, Megalodon, you can give it a new name, which means you can name it based on how they have two dicks. Uh... Megalodong. Megalo- oh, back to Megalodong. Mm-hmm. Megalodon. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's that's the that's the scientific name of any potential descendant of Megalodon. Megalodon. You've heard oh, yeah. it here on this episode. We've named them. Uh if you make a scientific paper naming it, sorry, you've already you've you've been you've been uh you've been scooped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got there first. We published this before you published your paper. So suck it, nerd. Yeah, that's how that works. For sure. Um, anywho, uh, that, this has been the podcast. Our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. And our Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. We have a Patreon. And Brandon, won't you give our, our Jack Lopes a thank with a, a special thank you to Will Smith after, uh, after not mentioning the, him the, despite the it was the episode. Time, the one time I forget to actually name him is the one time it was an episode he suggested. Yep, it was pretty great. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, thank the, the Jack Lopes, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Lenwood Sharp, Matthew Kelso. I, whoa, I transcribed those. Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith. Oh, wait. We're missing somebody. Oh, God. Who are we missing? Did we do it again? Oh, wait. No, we're not missing anyone. Okay. Okay. I don't think we're missing anyone. If we're missing someone, I think it's funnier if we're missing them at this point. Yeah. Oh, and also, thank you, Taxadea Taxis, to... uh. For for the recommendation, I think also I think also uh, uh, Bird Schneider was talking about it too. If my oh, hell is yeah. correct, um, but yeah. So uh, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have any monster requests or stories, send them in. Because hey, I'm actually doing them now. Apparently. <laughs> Oh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Um, I'm on Instagram at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is Tom Mike Hill at gmail his email is tommikehill at gmail.com and uh his website is tommikehill.com nice all right um thanks as always for listening i'm john i'm brandon and things are gonna get weird (laughs) 